Hey guys, and welcome to Upfront Games Week 33, episode 33. I don't know, I quit doing weeks. It's it's something. Um, anyway, so again, if you didn't catch us last week, Happy New Year, and uh, we're going to get right into it. So PlayStation this week, the preview slash trailer that we have for them is without escape. So go ahead and check this out. So that was without escape. That's been out for Steam, PC, and a couple others um, for a little while now. But it is just now releasing on Xbox and PlayStation 4. So um, let's just go ahead and jump into PlayStation News. So the top 20 game downloads for 2019 include Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Minecraft, NBA 2K19, GTA 5, NBA 2K20, Rainbow Six Siege, Madden NFL 20, Star Wars Battlefront 2, The Division 2, Days Gone, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Borderlands 3, MLB The Show 19, World War Z, God of War, Mortal Kombat 11, Rocket League, The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt Complete Collection, The Forest, and Marvel Spider-Man. Um, a lot of those, I'd say over half I'd probably own myself. Um, so it's, it's definitely a good comprehensive list and, uh, the only one that still surprises me in there is Grand Theft Auto V. I thought, you know, it, they, they are still doing improvements and again, Rockstar is really great at what they do. Um, it's just crazy that we're still, I, I remember playing it on PS3 and beating it and now we're into the end of the PS4 life cycle and Grand Theft Auto V is still relevant. Some good marketing right there. All right, moving on. Uh, MLB The Show 19's New Year's Cup sign-up started a couple days ago. Uh, they're going to have $10,000 in total prizes. The first qualifier was yesterday, and the last one is February 1st, with two qualifiers happening every weekend. The top 64 earners qualified in the final, and the top eight in each weekly tournament qualified directly to the final uh, the grand final will be a seeded bracket determined by season-wide points and finishes throughout the cup. Uh, there are also Mortal Kombat 11 and FIFA 20 tournaments running. You must be 16 years of age and over and residents of the U.S. and Canada with an active PS Plus subscription. So if you're a big MLB The Show 19 player, I've played a couple of them myself. Um... Go ahead and hop on that in one of these weekend qualifiers and see what you can't do to uh, guarantee your spot to be chasing for that $10,000 worth of prizes. Um, that's it for PlayStation. Let's go ahead and move into Xbox. And for Xbox, uh, we were going to have a trailer for Far Out, but it seems like there is no trailer, which is really weird for a game that's releasing this week. Um, so instead, it's going to be Hovership Havoc, so check it out.
Okay guys, so that was Hovership Havoc uh, releasing this week on Xbox. Uh, so we got a couple of pretty cool things for Xbox, but again, we're kind of limited on, on any major news. Uh, but there's free gifts in celebration of DC Universe's online university or anniversary. Jeez, can't talk today. Um, to celebrate the anniversary, they're giving away a free CR255 character advance, episode 34 Justice League Dark Access, um, a gift box that contains 21 Royal Chroma materials plus additional items like artifact XP, catalysts, and more. Uh, you must log in before January 31st to claim these gifts, uh, so there is that. Um, now, secondly, for Xbox for this week, Sea of Thieves passed 10 million players since launch, and they're focusing on the community for their January update that releases this Wednesday. Now, here's the sticking point when it comes to this update, and it's kind of weird to me. Um, it'll include two limited gifts, so it's a set of custom sales and a new emote. However you have to play between the 15th and the 22nd to confirm your eligibility and they'll be delivered at a later date in February. So what exactly is in the update from reading the article? I have no idea. Um, but if you like your chance at those sales and a new emote and you play Sea of Thieves, by all means, play this week after the 15th, which will be Wednesday, through the 22nd, so that you can guarantee that those get delivered to you in February at some point. So um, there you have it. Moving on to Nintendo. Now Nintendo's got no release this week. They will not have a release until next week. Um, but moving into what they do have, Mario and Luigi could be making a comeback with a new trademark. So Alpha Dream filed for bankruptcy after poor sales of the 3DS title, Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story and Bowser Jr.'s Journey at the start of the year. Now, Nintendo wasn't about to let that happen uh, as far as losing the franchise. Um, so three months after the finalized bankruptcy, of Alpha Dream, a trademark was filed in Argentina for a future entry in the series. The trademark covers video game software and mobile phones. There is no, there is nothing stated at this point on whether it'd be a continuation of what was already released or if it's just going to be remakes of those titles. So, uh, that being said, you Mario and Luigi fans will have something to look forward to in the near future, hopefully. Well, when we say near future, it's a trademark. It could be a couple years. Um, so next, Nintendo France will repair or replace faulty Joy-Cons even after the warranty has expired. If you live in France, it's been announced that they will be repairing or replacing these Joy-Cons after the warranty period. This comes after France labeled Nintendo as one of the worst companies of 2019 and the Nintendo Switch as one of the worst products. Uh, that being said, we covered this uh, a couple weeks ago when this actually came out and was, in, was spoke about within the French community and uh, so this is kind of a follow-up to that. I think it's a good move on Nintendo's part to kind of um, fix the relationship with the French consumer agency. However, there's no telling that this is going to do anything um, to fully repair that. There is a uh, it's kind of a stigma when it comes to uh, like different nations and different uh, impressions when it comes to product. Some some products come out and they, they have a fail somewhere that's just not something that a company, person, or country is going to overlook. And if it does get fixed, that's great. But a lot of players may have already passed in that region due to that reason. So hopefully they can fix everything in France and be a good company in, in the French consumer agency's eyes once again. However, um, I'm glad that the Nintendo of France organization is doing what they can 
to fix this within that region for those gamers. So um, moving on to Stadia. So Google Stadia has been tested on an e-reader. Uh, a Danish student did an experiment using an Onyx Book Max 3. He was able to run Destiny 2 on Google Stadia without many issues. He estimated the lag of 500 to 1,000 milliseconds, which is impressive for an e-ink display. He, uh, this was accomplished using a feature called X mode on the device. Uh, this is a high-end e-reader that runs about $859 and runs Android software. There's a video and the story on 9to5google.com. Uh, and then finally for Google Stadia, the Google Store is making constant improvements uh, with the latest being relatively simple but important to say the least. The sort by dropdown for all games now has a last added option to make new releases easier to find in the all games list. Uh, this wasn't there before so you kind of went in and you would see everything just kind of thrown together. Um, which, I mean, good improvement, but I'm still waiting for more from these guys uh, before I actually buy any games on the system. Um, that being said, that's it for this week. So, uh, again, like, comment, subscribe, uh, share, please. And anything that you felt that you would like to discuss in this video, by all means, leave me a comment below or, um, oh, I'm sorry by all means, send me a message here at my channel. So thank you guys, and we'll see you next week.